Welcome back. It's the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. The conversation continues. We look at uh, the fact that the Central Bank of Nigeria has increased the interest rate to 13% from 11.5%. We have Muktak Mohammed on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Uh, but just before then, a little bit of a background. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Tuesday raised the interest rate to 13% for the first time in two years. Uh, that's from 11.5% to 13%, uh, like we mentioned, 13.5%. Now, justifying the increase, uh, the CBN governor, Godwin Emefili, said the MPC is suspicious there might be an aggressive uh, creation of inflation. And to prevent the looming inflation, he said the MPC had to increase the monetary policy rate by 150 basis points. Meanwhile, the nation's apex bank retained the asymmetric corridor around the MPP, MPR at uh, plus 100 slash minus 100 basis points and cash reserve ratio at 27.4% and liquidity ratio at 30%. Six members actually voted to the increase by the uh, MPR by 150 basis and four members by 100 uh, basis point and one member by 50 basis point. But this is some of the semantics of this monetary policy. We'll just get straight to it now. Muktak Mohammed is on standby. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. All right. So, um, Let's get to the conversation. What, what do you make of this increase by the Central Bank of Nigeria and the justification for this? They're looking at looming inflation. Well, um, normally, interest rate is often increased. I mean, the increase in interest rate is often um, used to tackle, I mean, used to fight um, inflation that is driven by demand and not to tackle inflation that is driven by cost of um, cost and then um, chain disruption. So what, I, what do I mean? If you have a high demand of a good and services, then you begin to increase rate to fight those demand to bring down inflation. But in our own cost, our inflation is driven by cost of what? Cost of goods, cost, and this cost is already driven from the, uh, driven, um, um, coming from the area of cost of production. And so, and uh, you talk about sub, sub, supply chain destruction, which happened to do with international problems that have to do with the pandemic and also now with the Russian Ukraine crisis. So, when you look at this, then you are not so much excited about that the CBN have been able to increase rate because you might see those effectiveness of those uh, incrementing rate. Because we are looking at uh, um, inflation is always driven by two major, uh, three major segments, depending on where you are. You look at the cost of production can drive inflation high. Then you look at the uh, market-induced inflation. Then you can also look at uh, microeconomy-induced inflation. Now in Nigeria, at the moment, we are tackling cost-induced inflation, market-induced inflation, and then microeconomy-induced inflation. So by the time you increase rates, you will not be able to see the effectiveness of this rate because you are not fighting inflation that has to do with demand. You are, fight, you are tackling inflation. So, um, you know, so what does this really mean now? What does this translate, you know, to Nigerians? I mean, for, um, you know, a person who would have to go to the market, a person who would have to transact, we're talking about buying and selling. What does this uh, mean? Well, uh, we're hoping that we have uh, Muktak Mohammed join the conversation. I'm sure that he wasn't even done with his uh, thoughts right there when he was talking about, um, you know, there are measures. You probably have to increase the rate at a certain time. But at Absolutely. this point in time, what we're looking at is not what should be obtainable. So invariably, what is expected is that inflation rate should be increased uh, when you have the, the law of, I mean, it's basic that you have demand and supply on top of, you know, uh, the the table, but it's not the case. Is that you have inflation that the CBN is trying to control by you know deliberate action. I mean, this is like you have uh, cuts of uh, the cost of goods and services on the high. He's mentioned you know other factors, and uh, it, it doesn't really seem like it. You know, it's a brilliant idea. However, yes, yes, indeed. Um, right, right now, um, you know, I mean, Tui, uh, guest Dr. Tui, who was. 
he had talked about monkeypox, could not help but talk about the economy, you know, to me, of, of the even when he sat here and mentioned a few things, a few words about the economy. Um, I do not know if uh, investors and uh, the, the public generally has, still has confidence in, in the government and the operators of the, and the midwifers of the macroeconomy uh, being the central bank of Nigeria to, to do a good job. Um, is the central bank, how have they fed? How has the, uh, the government of the central bank of Nigeria, who is heading this operation, even though they have the MPC being the monetary policy committee that votes, uh, the central bank is seen to be the one in charge of, of, of the macroeconomy of the country. Um, um, and of course, coming up with these uh, monetary policies, you know, to stabilize the economy, to stabilize the Naira, to address inflation. Things are, are in a mess as we speak. And so, I mean, if, if you have things in a mess, you cannot be said to be doing well. Um, the situation is not helped by the fact that the, the Central Bank of Nigeria governor has been, has been you know, distracted with his um, political campaign or political um, uh, aspirations, even had the time, in the midst of the economic situation we have in the country, he had the time uh, and the audacity to go to court uh, to try and force INEC to allow him not to resign, stay in office as Central Bank of Nigeria governor while running a campaign to become the president of Nigeria. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's beyond words. I don't have the words to describe the situation. But Mokhtar Mohammed is back on Zoom with us. Uh, Mokhtar, can you hear me, please? Mokhtar, can you hear us, please? All right, we seem to still have that uh, uh, our connection issue. So um, it, it, is, it is beyond words that should be said on, on television to describe in, you know, you know, what's, what's going on. Uh, we, your house is on fire, literally. Your house is on fire. Uh, some floors have been burnt. You have just a few floors to salvage. And instead of going to carry water, you're carrying water, but you're also going to the fast food restaurant to buy food to eat before coming back. You know, um, let's just allow, allow this, 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 this period pass and let them, let them go with their wahala. And maybe we can, can salvage the economy. It's baffling. And, 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 yeah. and the man, the man who is, so, still, so, is still in office, he's, he, he left the court, withdrew his case from the court. He went to court to tell the judge to force INEC to allow him run a campaign and, and vie for the office of the president while remaining in office as central bank governor. Only for President Buhari to say all political appointees who want to vie for these political positions resign. And then he withdrew his case from court. And, and he's still in a job. Mercy. No, but, uh, but I thought you said that it was okay for people to have you know, personal interests. You know interest. how, how the narrative. But, but I thought I'm you said. where the narrative is in free fall. No, but I thought you so, said. So, you know, right now, we, sh we, just, we should just manage ourselves and allow, allow a Mayfield a go. So, know, so we have a guest there. Up. I mean, I was going it, to take it. it. It's, it's, yes, it's, uh, let us manage things, you know. You know, Muktak Mohammed, it's good to have you join us back this morning. We apologize, you know, for the back and forth with connection with you. Uh, can you hear us, Muktak yes. Mohammed? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I can hear you clearly. Now, I, I deduce from your uh, conversation that this, the reason for this rate increase, uh, it's not necessarily dependent on de uh, demand and supply, and so you you went ahead to mention some other factors and. Yes, what I was saying is that um, inflation, if you want to know how effective in your increment in rate could be, is when you are struggling in inflation in the area of demand. But our own problem is that we are going to be tackling inflation in the area of cost of production. And if you are tackling cost of production and, and destruction supply, your increment in uh, interest rate does not always give you the desired results. That is exactly what I was saying. Now, when you look at what drives Nigeria inflation, you look at cost of production, you look at microeconomy, and then you look at market induced. Now, if you look at these three areas, you realize that we are not uh, going to have any result by incrementing rates. Because when you are talking about cost of production, you are talking about cost of goods and services. And when you are talking about cost of production, you also you look at other infrastructure that 
that has the cost of this cost of production, that making cost of production to go high. Now we look at the price of diesel because it, there seems to be no power in existence. So the cost of diesel has moved from 300 to 650. So and then that means the cost of production of any good transfers from the manufacturing sector has to go up to meet up with that with the, with the price that has been in cost on diesel. Then secondly, when you look at market induced inflation, you are looking at the microeconomy. And when you look at what the CDN is saying now, the cost of borrowing is going to go high. And what it means that those companies that are borrowing is going to cost them more to pay for those good for the, for, 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 their, for the fund that they have borrowed. So they are going to transfer that into the, the consumers. Then when you look at demand and supply, demand and supply will still be high. Because what is causing it is the FX rate volatility. And we are not addressing that yet. Even if CBN is saying, okay, by, by this we are going to attract a fixed income investment, which could be good. But look at it this way. The fixed income investment is not going to come because when you look at the differential between the parallel market and the import-export market, no investors want to come into your market, your own market control by 420, 430. And when you have a parallel market that has been at 606 naira. So when you look at all this, it doesn't seem to add up to be able to tackle inflation. Rather, in the short term, we might see inflation still go up. Hmm. Uh, 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 Mutar Mohammed, do you feel that this is also uh, connected or not unconnected with um, uh, the culture, the four yearly culture of um, a lot of money in circulation during political campaigning uh, ahead of the general elections? Um, do you feel this is also sort of um, a defensive move to protect the economy in terms of the inflation rate and also to protect the Naira? Because a lot of money is going to be thrown out into the public. We've seen 100 million Naira and over. Yes. <laughs> you see, I was listening to the um, chairman of the Blue the Change, or the president of Blue Change, Laon Gwada. And he said that Nigeria have more confidence in the dollar than in the Naira. You and I know that most politicians are not stuck in their houses with Naira. They are stuck in it with dollar. So when you are looking at that, how much, how much can CBN control the liquidity flow in the area of dollar? So they cannot because they don't even know the amount of dollars that is in circulation. Even in our own Naira, you cannot exactly say this is the number of circulation. So you begin to say, okay, you want to use some other parameter to reduce it. So it's a big challenge for them. I know they are looking at the political year, there will be a lot of liquidity in the system. But what form of liquidity? Is it coming in the form of our currency or is it coming in the form of dollar? Okay. Um, that will be the major challenge. All right. So quickly, what do you think this would mean for an average Nigerian or a Nigerian? What does this translate into? Does it affect or impact on us in any way? Well, what it translates to an average Nigerian is that your cost of living is going to go up, your earning capability is still very low, so no hardship. The economy is not growing. In the investment take growth, they will tell you that it's growth about one three percent. But when you want to see the real growth, the real growth is from the bottom up. How many people are being lifted out of poverty? Rather, we are seeing more people going into poverty. How many people are are having jobs. And we're seeing a lot of people. Well, uh, we have to let you go at this point, not deliberately, but we're out of time, and of course, the network is not in our favor. Thank you so much, Muktak Mohammed, for being part of the show uh, this morning. He's an economist and he's been trying to make us understand the impact and the dynamics of having that increase from 13, from 11.5% to 13.5%. That's much we can take this morning on The Breakfast. I am Messia Bopo. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow with very interesting conversations on The Breakfast. We have more programming ahead on Plus TV Africa, so please keep watching. Good morning.